Welcome to Showcase Richmond, everyone. I'm Chip Tarkin and good Thursday morning. There has been a lot of media attention on heat related deaths in football. The awareness about these tragedies is there, but as parents, coaches, trainers and players, are we doing everything that we can to prevent them? To address this very important issue and to bring it to the forefront of solution is Mike Craven. He's the founder of True Fitness Solutions. Mike, welcome. The topic of death by dehydration is going to be a big focus of a national strength and conditioning seminar at Virginia Tech that you'll be speaking at. Tell us about it. Chip, what we're doing is Dr. Gaines is <clears throat> having this seminar to bring awareness that there's many cumulative factors that add to, to heat exhaustion and, and, and stroke and death. And we want to be able to think outside the box of what we have the ability to control in the way we, we prepare to prevent. So right now we have to make more of a continuous effort to address heat related deaths and to talk about things as, as such as environmental, physiological and nutritional issues that we have control over. Some football players at Lee Davis High School are, are part of your program and they're going through some conditioning exercises. We're going to run the, roll the tape here in just a second. I want you to tell us about them and what we're looking at. When you, when you look at football today, that's a power speed sport and obviously the conditioning is to be able to improve those conditions. Make the, athlete, make the athletes faster, make the athletes bigger, make the athletes stronger. But at the same time, not much attention is given to aerobic strength. So like this young man right now doing this lift and trying to improve his acceleration from the bottom to the top, he's building what we call absolute and speed strength. And in the sport of football, that is critical, okay? Um, when, you, when you think of the need for performance and how athletes buy into training if they can see their self perform better, well then at the same avenue we've got to think is aerobic activity a measured strength and it is but at the, at the same time we don't hear a lot of people talking about it. Dr. Mars two weeks, two weeks ago brought up a very clear point that a person's MET score was a measurement of aerobic strength and how we can, can tolerate hot human environments have everything to do with a person's aerobic strength. In some way we've overbalanced that with our strength and conditioning programs. So these things that are needed that we're seeing right now, this, this development of anaerobic strength, these kids improving their 30-second uh, shuttle, is that needed for the sport of football? Most definitely. Are all those other forms of strength needed? Most definitely. But where are we neglecting aerobic strength? So an example in this film right here, we're looking at, at young men by position all doing a certain work rate and the ones that stopped the soonest, the gentleman in the blue, Tyler, and, and Drew, they were both offensive and defensive tackles, you would expect their aerobic strength values to be lower than the other athletes. The athlete that we see right, right there, Curtis in the orange, and Ryan, Ryan stopping off to the left, Curtis is a wide receiver, but his ability to go non-stop steady rate and, and, to, and be able to improve that steady rate is a measure of aerobic strength. With such attention to conditioning, why are incidents of heat-related deaths still occurring? It's the neglect of, of properly preparing athletes to prevent. So like right now, the term MET score is a measurement, just like a cholesterol test. When, if I've got a young man right now who's going to be exposed to high human environments, we want people to, to realize that a low MET score with at the same time a high body fat, with at the same time a kid taking a supplement that's nothing more than a diuretic, also being on a low carb diet, there's many f cumulative factors that cause that person to, to basically be susceptible to heat related illness. We've got about 30 seconds left, Mike. You told me sweating is good. Explain why it's good during exercise. You, you want to think that people with high MET scores, high aerobic strengths, their body's internal temperature to, to stress, they start the sweating response sooner. And these are things that we, we can show that the differences in a, in a person who's highly conditioned and how their body regulates heat compared to a person who's poorly conditioned makes us, makes us question the need for year-round conditioning for aerobic strength. All right, you're in the process of finding a local school to hold a seminar for concerned parents and athletes and coaches. But in the meantime, if you'd like to call Mike for an appointment, here's what you do. Call him at 543-9293. Our buddy, True Fitness Solutions, Mike Craven. Mike, thanks for bringing this information to the forefront. I think a lot of folks are going to understand how imperative it is. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Well, thanks for having us. Coming up next on the subject of sports, next on Showcase Richmond, BCU will explain some of the regulations of the NCAA and CAA. And